Welcome, everybody. It's Sven Hosford again with the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. We've got a great interview today, another extended interview with uh, one of our favorite guests, Charmaine Bassett Trim. She is uh, a microcurrent pioneer. She's a pioneer in a whole bunch of things. She's uh, probably one of the most well educated people that I've ever met when it comes to all systems of the body and how they all operate and what is actually the very best technology to be bringing about real healing, real treatment of the causes, and not just a, a treatment of the, of the uh, symptoms. So let's bring her on board. Uh, welcome, Charlotte, uh, Charmaine. <laughs> Charlotte, Charmaine. I can be Charlotte today. I get, you know, it's it, we, the, the princess was named today. Uh, it got Charlotte on the brain, I guess. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, her name is Charlotte, so... Well, if I call you oh, Charlotte, that's that's what happened today. As long as you don't give me a web or anything like that, <laughs> there's enough fights that happen today. <laughs> enough what fights? Fights that happen today. Oh yeah, we're not going to have any fights. Uh, we're all we're all in agreement here. Um, we want to talk about a couple things. First of all, uh, your uh, the, our last interview is uh, covered in our new issue of the magazine, which is out on the streets, and uh, you'll be getting your copies uh, very soon. And um, in it, uh, we covered uh, our last uh, conversation. Uh, there's a little bit of a page there for you. And we talked about uh, microcurrents. And I want to touch base and, and go a little bit more in, uh, in depth about some of the things you said in there. And I also want to cover this uh, microcurrent conference that we went to, uh, was it about a month ago or so? Uh, you were there and uh, Dr. Courtney and uh, a couple of other folks. That was a mind blower. I mean, uh, the things I saw, the things you talked about, uh, just amazing. So I want to make sure uh, I get this straight. In our last podcast, you talked about uh, being able to, with 20 or 40 sessions, being able to actually repair a severed spinal cord. Did we get that right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I have to say that the group of neuroscientists that I work with and share data with, uh, the ones that actually developed the brain mapping system that I use, um, they're saying they don't even want to look at any other science. They don't even hardly even want to look at nutrition, which yeah. I think is a big mistake because whenever they get stuck, I get the people they get stuck with because they know that I take a strong look at nutrition. I believe in, in building blocks. You know, I kind of look at the current, the frequency, the, uh, what we're doing with the brain mapping and regeneration. I kind of look at that as the architect. Um, but I still believe that we need some, you know, brick and some mortar and some of the mother, as, yeah, as we would yeah. call it in homeopathy. I believe there's so many people out there that are doing home homeopathic remedies using just frequency devices, and there's no mother at all. And I just, I, hmm. they work, absolutely, but you're losing so much efficacy by doing it that way. Um, well, I, I really, yeah, was, I really appreciate it. You're taking it. people. What's uh, that? I'm sorry. I really appreciated how your attitude is to present a full court press. And you look at the nutritional, you look at the chemical, you look at the electrical, you look at uh, all the systems of body and how everything works together and try to have something that's, you know, moving forward on all fronts. There's, there's so much that seems to be left out of modern medicine. And one of them is th this real critical thing that I think we could talk a little bit more about is just the, the way that modern medicine, American medicine, views the body as a meat machine or as a chemical experiment, you know, but there's very little acknowledgement of the electrical activity that's going on. And that's where the, all of this work with everything we say microcurrent comes in. Can you expand a little bit more about that? <laughs> I say a little bit. Uh, can you expand on that uh, about the difference between looking at the body as a, as a chemical experiment or a chemical being uh, as opposed to an electrical being? Well, you know, I'm wondering if even modern allopathic medicine even looks at us as chemical beings because they really do use a lot of drugs that affect the biochemistry, but I don't see it working in tandem with healthy metabolic functions. But I, I see what you're doing where you're trying to divide a line in the sand there. And yet, uh, the thing is, is they really do use electrical devices. They use them every single day in their practice. They just don't understand the scope, the breadth, and the width of what they hold in their possession. You know, when go to a doctor's office and he takes your blood pressure or he does an EEG or an EKG or he does a lot of these, you know, MRIs, um, a lot of different scans. I mean, those are all using electrical microcurrent. It's all, it, they're using microcurrent to actually do the diagnostic test. The difference is 
But what we're doing is we are taking a look at the diagnostic test and going, oh, that frequency is deficient right there. So let's give the body that. And then here it's running really, really high. So let's bring that down. And you're trying once again to just have nice, even, a constant flow of electricity with a nice, you know, smooth sine wave, mm -hmm. you know, which we're going to look at and call that, you know, heart rate coherence. Um, and, you know, that's a real big thing right now that everybody's looking at and realizing that through breath and through, you know, your mind and through learning how to calm yourself down with your breath where you can actually create a nice even sine wave and get a nice heart rate coherence. And like I was saying before, we measure this from space and we're seeing what a difference that makes on every level of your health. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of ways we can use microcurrent, but the modern doctors are using it. They just don't realize that there's just no training really out there. That's why I was really happy to see the microcurrent conference because there are little groups that are taking off and doing their things here, there, and everywhere. And yes, there's uh, big events that I can go into Las Vegas that have floors of people that you know are designing the devices and demonstrating the devices. But you can't really go. There's no school out there besides mine that I know of mm -hmm. that you can actually go to and you're taught how to use the electrical sciences. And so that's one of the things that my university does focus on. Um, we're, we're into the part of the Ph.D. program right now that is based on the electrical and the neurosciences. So back to your original question about spinal cord severing. Mm. What's really, really great is that, yes, the body can regenerate everything and you know there's a reason why we have found brain growth factors and nerve growth factors i mean these are hormones neuropeptides neurotransmitters whatever you want to call them um, but they exist and they're in the body and we know the frequency of them so we can actually stimulate them and modulate because that's what you're really trying to do you're trying to modulate and create balance but sometimes you're trying to push the system um you know there's sometimes we've worked with athletes where we hit the testosterone button Back to back to hmm. back to back to back. And sure enough, we do blood work a week and a half, a couple weeks later. And what do we see? More testosterone in the body. Hmm. I mean, it's so endless. And so I really liked what uh, Dr. Jim Suzuki, the one that really, really brought microcurrent to the forefront. Um, and he said, take anything that you know. And you're speaking with an individual, whatever their speciality is. Tell them to just drive frequency through it, just to hmm. drive current through it. And if they do that, then... How much faster are they going to get there? Six times. Yeah, at least six times faster. Yeah. And that's if you just don't even know what you're doing. That's if you just basically take and plug up your basic healing yeah. frequencies. Well, that, that, That's without even going into specifics. That's what's so fascinating is that you're actually feeding back to the tissues, the frequency of healthy tissue, where your mapping devices find that they're it's deficient. And just that feeding of that electrical current back into that tissue is what brings about the healing six times faster. I just want to make sure I understand that. Is that, is that how it basically yeah. works? Well, yeah. we're electrical first. Um, and then the electricity then is going to create metabolic changes. Mm -hmm. And when you're taking a look at metabolic changes, what you're looking at is top of the food chain is going to be, depending on where it's at in the body, it, some people call them hormones, some people call them neurohormones, some people call them neuropeptides, some people call them neurotransmitters. So depending on, you know, who you're speaking to and what their schooling is, they're basically all the same thing and they are they're, they are what communicate. They fight for first place with your enzymes and with your probiotic status. So if we can take a look at what we can do with electricity and communications, which is really what it's all about, and communicate to the hormones, to the probiotics, and to the enzymes and use that as part of the healing, you can see where we can then go six times faster in that mm -hmm. area too. Mm -hmm. And six mm -hmm. times faster there and six times faster there. And we just talked to the top three biochemical control mechanisms on top of the fact that we're getting communication to go all throughout the whole body to communicate with all of our cells. And you can see six over here, six over there, six over there. It's really a lot more than six mm -hmm. times faster, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's where the, that's where the experience and, the good diagnostics and knowing how to use the equipment, you know, at a higher and better level, that's the education that we're just starting to tip the scale on. And we're just starting to get that information out there. I mean, there are books and there are a lot of people out there. I know Dr. Condroy does a heck of a job teaching um, a lot of practitioners how to improve eyesight. He's done a wonderful job with that. He's put together, you know, a very viable, easy to follow, um, proven concept for eyes. 
Um, and I know there are groups out there that are doing a lot of things with microcurrent that are documented and getting the protocols, but it's really, we have yet to all come together as a group. And that's really what I like about the neural feedback that I use is we do share a database. Mm. Every time I do a brain map, I'm sharing that database with at least a hundred other practitioners. And boy, has that really in the, in the five years we've been sharing that database, we have improved our technology, what it took the other 30 years. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, wow. this is what I thought was really cool about that conference that Dr. Courtney put together is, you know, you're yeah. bringing practitioners together and, you know, trying to take it to the next level and get the, the people that have experience. So, you know, you're standing on the on the shoulders of these giants that have already been working with it and taking it to the next level. And, you know, if you take people from different schools of thought, you know, you have a cardiologist that knows how to read an EKG really well. And you have a neuroscientist that knows how to brain map really well. And then you have a body worker that goes, oh my God, we've got crystallized lymph here. We have congestion here. We have deficiency here if you're a nutritionist. And you kind of tie all that together. That's when it really gets exciting for me. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at right now. I like working with the quantum computers a lot wow. because creating at a quantum level is nothing short of not only miraculous, but there was a lady right at the conference that she has been using microcurrent. She was doing some of the eye protocols and mm -hmm. she kept getting stuck in certain areas. And I said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, you're a practitioner, you're taking all the right supplements, you're doing all the right things. That means that what we're missing. And I said, I'm just going to write it down on a piece of paper. I'm not going to tell you. We're going to look at it after we do a diagnostic on you. I said, but it's got to be some sort of environmental concern. And, you know, the eyes are very delicate tissue. I'm going to say you probably have a mold exposure mm -hmm. or Lyme's disease or something along this line, some sort mm -hmm. of neurotoxin that you're being exposed through due to environment. And after we test her, sure enough, we found heavy mold, fungus, and candida. So what we did is we downloaded about 7,000 different frequencies to her simultaneously and gave her only a 15-minute session. And she got off the device and she saw better. And I just talked to her last week and she said she saw better for three days. Wow. And that was not an eye program. Okay, that had nothing to do with the eyes. That had to do with knocking down the mold, um, pulling it out of the tissue, neutralizing it, and then bringing up the other probiotics that were out of whack because of that, as well as supporting eye tissue and probably a hundred other things that I did simultaneously. Like I said, that's when we, it gets really fun. <laughs> that's so. That's when it gets really fast too. I mean, that's just amazing. Yeah. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Now, you know. We've all been hearing about inflammation, inflammation, and and actually one of the presenters there, uh, Shannon, um, what's her name from uh, from Jacksonville, she told the story about um, a, a young girl who had RSD, uh, uh, reflexive sympathetic dystrophy, a uh, very painful nerve disease, which uh, she was able to basically cure in just a just a handful of sessions. By well, knocking in one down session, the inflammation. She was out of pain. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. Oh, and these pain levels are on a one to ten. I, I understand to be like twenty and thirty. Twenty. Yeah, yeah. twenty. <laughs> so, uh, in my experience with this, is uh, I worked on a documentary about a young girl named Bethany who was in a wheelchair for three and a half years. Same condition. She broke the back of her inflammation using raw food, and it took about six months. But she went from not, literally having a biopsy with no nerve cells in her her, her legs to walking without assistance in six months using raw foods. But the key, I just found it fascinating that the key thing, this, this common denominator between those handful of, of microcurrents and that six months of raw food was break the back of the inflammation. Can, can you describe what that means exactly and, and how do we know when our inflammation level is too high and, and how, do we, how do we make that key turn there? Okay, well, I think that it's kind of twofold because I don't know if you remembered in my presentation when I showed those curling photographs of cooked versus raw food. Mm -hmm. And really what it came down to is it came down to the same exact thing, how much energy is coming off of that. So even the foods that we eat are going to give us electrical energy. And we, we show that with the curling photography. We, there's other ways that we can show that too. You know, we know the specific frequency for every single plant and even its com chemical components. Um, so you're looking at the beautiful thing with the raw food is there's three things that are happening. Number one, the probiotics are still going to be in there. Remember we talked about biochemistry. Mm -hmm. There was three things. There was probiotics. Okay, you're going to get that from raw food. There's enzymes. Second, you heat up your food past 120 degrees, sometimes even 105. Let's push the envelope and say oh, you're going to go up to 140. 
Anything past that, you're destroying all the enzymes. So the food can't even be broken down to get utilized. Um, and then you're going to talk about also all the nutrients are still going to be intact because they haven't been destroyed through the heating and the cooking process. So that's why raw foods work really, really great. They're going to give you all the energy from the plant, everything it has to offer. So it really is doing, a plant is doing its form of microcurrent mm. when we eat it. That's Aside from all the biochemical things it does, it absolutely gives us an energy exchange. The healthy plants that have not been destroyed through heating will donate electrons. And that's really, truly what all the electrical devices are doing. And they're, they're don donating electrons. That's a big part of the science and a big part of the medicine is the inotiphoresis, the, the, the downloading of ions, which increases hmm. cell permeability. It increases, it helps to remove trapped proteins. And um, it's just product penetration. I mean, there's a million uses. So you took somebody that, you know, had no metabolic energy to repair. So that's what the raw foods were offering. They were offering enough nutrition to repair. We should not be plagued with all this inflammation. But there's a couple things that happen. One thing is we all have a toxic burden. And it's been around for five generations now. So what does that mean? It's cumulative. So what my great grandmother had. She gave to my grandmother. Hmm. What those two had, they gave to my mother. What those three have, I have. And what us four have, I've now given to my daughter. My daughter is now pregnant, so we're actually going into the sixth generation. All those toxins are now going to be into her baby. So when it comes to genetics, that's really how the genetics plays a role. But at the same time, this toxic burden, it sits in the tissue, and it actually is creating the inflammation. So if you're looking at, a toxic burden and a traumatic injury combined, that's where she was having a hard time getting her body to repair. There was too much mm -hmm. interference going on there. And so that's one of the nice things that the microcurrent of the raw foods can do is it's donating all this extra energy for the body to do the repairs that it needs to do. Um, so the raw foods are great. The microcurrent's great. But imagine if you put those all together and then threw in some raw CBDs, some acetyl L-carnitine, some HCG where there's a lot of nutrients that you can take that we know regenerate the nerve and the brain tissue. So if you put that all together, it would have just happened that much faster. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are always great stories, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, amazing. It's, it's just, well, again, you know, this like the, the things that modern American doctors don't know uh, could fill more books than what they do know, it seems like. Um, and, and, and Well, yeah, but that, yeah, that's the problem with the inflammation though. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've got this toxic burden how much nutrition does it take to knock down your toxic burden versus somebody else? How do I look at that in the body? Well, truly marking inflammation. There are a few blood tests that are available now that can help track that. You've got your triglycerides, your C-reactive protein, your homocysteine levels, your A1C. There's things that we can look at that mark inflammation. But the bottom line is, I'm echoing again like crazy. Uh -oh. Okay, now I'm back. Are we okay on your end? Yep, yeah, we're good on our end. Okay. It, it's okay now. I'm yeah. good. Okay. Um, so what it takes for each individual to knock down inflammation is going to be very unique. But once somebody gets sick, once somebody has a health issue, genu generally we're looking at it takes 10 times the amount of nutrition to turn that person around. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of like thou cup hath floweth over. Thou have reached thou toxic burden. And, and once you've gotten to that point, it takes a lot more to knock it down and to keep it down. And the right. problem is, is if you detox on a regular basis and don't know what you're doing, you're actually going to create more tissue damage than it's worth. You can actually, you know, do more harm than good well, with, the, with, the, with the detoxing. We, we were talking a little bit before we came on here about mold and all of the things that can happen. And you were saying how if you don't uh, get rid of that mold correctly from within the cells, it's just going to recirculate and cause more problems. Is that Did I get that right? Well, the problem with mold is it actually has a little hook, a little filament yeah. called a lacuna, and it will actually grab a hold and attach to your tissue all over your body. So if you go and you kill the mold, which people are like, oh, I have the frequency to kill mold. I have a Hilda Clark Zapper or whatever may be the case, or I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take some herbs um, to kill the mold. The problem is, is mold is systemic. It's throughout all your tissues everywhere in your body. So if you kill mold, without getting it to a place where it can actually be eliminated and removed from the body, you know, that die off is a hundred times, if not more deadly than the actual mold was. Hmm. So once again, you're creating more harm than good. And 
this is the problem that I see. You know, people will go in and take these certain supplements or do these certain frequencies to get rid of mold, and the person's going to end up 10 times or 100 times more sick because they detox properly. And I think that's a big missing link, and people are starting to catch on. I see more and more articles all the time about phase one and phase two detox, mm -hmm. about giving yourself a good support, you know, antioxidant support while you're doing this, how important that is in your water, keeping your skin healthy, but also if you're going to be detoxing, supporting the livers of detox. So we actually like to also put our patients, our seekers on diets that support the tissue, the organs that handle detox, as well as foods that help gradually chelate on a daily basis and pull out the toxins gradually. So you're not just overwhelmed all the time. Mm. Um, your diet should be 85% raw. Mm. And that's not just fruits and vegetables. That's really everything. Right. right. Um, if you're not going to eat your food raw, then you need to cook it as slow and low or as little as possible. That's really where mm. the benefit comes from. Uh, and that's going to help a lot with keeping the inflammatory markers down. Yeah, that, uh, and without that's without the inflammation knockdown, you can't you, your body can't even heal properly. Um, it would be the equivalent of trying to you know heal a wound, but you didn't pull out the thorn yet. So you're going to heal the tissue over the thorn. We know there's going to be a problem. So getting rid of infection and inflammation has to precede uh, the actual tissue healing. Hmm. Um, you know, your body creates inflammation for three days for a reason to bring all the the white blood cells that you need to clean up all the mess. Um, all the nutrients to the area and to eliminate the waste. Um, so there is a, a big problem when you have someone that has systemic inflammation that's had chronic inflammation, trying to get tissue healing is, is, is very difficult. The problem. Well, let's, let's cover one more uh, thing that you talked about at the uh, microcurrent conference. And I think um, it's just one more thing that uh, Western medicine has kind of forgotten about or doesn't want to pay attention to. And that's uh, our friend, the lymph. The lymph glands, or uh, our new slogan is uh, "Lymph Free or Die," which is going to be real popular in uh, a T-shirt in North uh, New Hampshire. Um, yeah, I like that one. I, I think that's a. I, I think we really need to do. We that. need to do I that. Like that yeah. concept. I'll give them out as free T-shirts when people walk through the right. right. My place. Get people talking. Well, you said something that really stuck with me, and you said that. Uh, we think of our body as 70 to 80 percent water, and it's not. It's 70 to 80 percent lymph, and if we're lucky, our lymph is 70 to 80 percent water. Do I remember those numbers right? That sounds just about right. Yeah. And how the 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 flow of the lymph is one of the very first things that you make sure is working properly, uh, because if that's not working, ain't nothing else going to work, right? Well, the, my famous line is: "You cannot have pain or disease." If you have a healthy lymphatic system, mm. that's the most powerful statement in defining the importance of the lymphatic system. Um, most people know about it on some level, uh, and and people are waking up. There are a lot of practitioners that do lymph draining now. Mm. You know, I mean, they there are people that are getting the idea of how important it is. I mean, I see actually even here at one of the hospitals in Toledo that after women get the lumpectomies, um, that they get lymph draining. Mm -hmm. You know afterwards so that they don't get the lymphedema and they learn how to use the kinesio tape to get the lymph to flow mm -hmm. properly mm -hmm. afterwards because if not we know that they end up with all this edema and it can it can be life-threatening and if, at the very least extremely painful mm -hmm. um so if we can keep that lymph moving properly uh it, ha ha getting rid of inflammation is easy yeah well yes i mean easy is a, easy. easy for who easier you know yeah. i mean well, there's a lot of tools for moving the lymph. Okay. Well, and that's that's the other thing that, uh, and that's why we see you bouncing up and down uh, a lot. Is you yeah, also I know. sitting I don't on sit a ball? Still. See, I'm on the ball right now. Yeah. Well, you were. We should say the, you're, you're well qualified because you were uh, one of the uh, you uh, you were an aerobics champion uh, back in the '80s, right? Back in the yeah. day, back when spandex was king. Uh, so you know yeah, what you're talking about. about it. But. Uh, <laughs> But the th the thing that I find fascinating about the lymph system is there's no pump, there's no uh, thing that makes it move. There's just these series of one way valves. Do I have that right? Yeah. Well, there's the lymph system is on one side a closed system, which most people are going to know. You know, tonsils, axillary for the women that have the breast cancer and they move the nodes through the axillary, inguinals, which is down by your groin, you know. Um, 
I'm trying to think of another place that people are familiar with nodes, adenoids. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, you have between five, depending on whose research you read, and I imagine each person is unique unto themselves, but you have somewhere between 500 to 900 lymph nodes in your body hmm. that are attached to lymph vessels, and that's where the one-way flat valves are at. That's the closed aspect of the lymphatic system. Okay. The part that most people aren't aware of is the open part of the lymphatic system. Hmm. The open part of the lymphatic system is what all the cells actually live in. So it's called extracellular fluid, extracellular matrix, terrain, interstitial fluid. There's many ways to say it, but it's what bathes each and every single cell in the body. So most people think it's the blood system that feeds the cells, but it's the blood system that feeds the matrix, the terrain, the extracellular fluid, the lymphatic fluid. Um, and then that is what provides the nutrients for the cells. Mm. Then once the cells have done all their metabolic activities and they have the toxins to release, those toxins end up back in that same fluid that surrounds the cells, that lymphatic fluid that is now full of waste product. And it's actually the capillary pressure that drives those toxins back into the lymphatic vessel, mm. the closed aspect of the lymphatic system, where we have the one-way flat valves. This is now where because there is no central pump for the lymphatic system, this is where exercise and movement is critical. Mm -hmm. You will find that all the major nodes are going to be in one of two places on the body. They're going to be during anything that's open to the environment. So around the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, you know, vaginally, rectally, urinary tract. There's always a lot of nodes in this area because this is where we're exposed to the external environment. Mm -hmm. So this will give us an extra immune system boost. Although we do have Probiotics that live a, a, across the top of our entire skin everywhere. If we have a healthy, we have healthy skin. If we have a sure. healthy pH mantle there. Um, but what ends up happening is next to every joint. So any place where a joint moves, head turns, your shoulders come up and down. There's a lot of lymph nodes during artic our by articulating joints. So movement is the number one way to get lymph to actually do its job, which mm -hmm. is to be constantly moving. I mean, they've now proven. That sitting all day is worse than smoking two packs of American cigarettes. Isn't that crazy? Worse for your health. Two packs a day. Worse yeah. than two packs of American yeah. cigarettes a day. Sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. Sitting yeah. is the worst thing in the world for your body. So I try to tell people, get a ball. Mm -hmm. you know, I probably shouldn't do it on the show. I'll get people dizzy. But you know, <laughs> if you're going to sit, try to sit on a ball at the very least. And if you're going to sit, a couple things you need to make sure, because you're probably looking at a computer if you're sitting that long, right? You know, take your eyesight, make sure you look different distances and do sweeping motions with your eyes because we know that looking at the same distance all day long is very, very hard for the eyes, the muscles in the eyes. Um, it's overuse syndrome, just like if you just sat and typed all day, that's overuse syndrome. You'd be shortening all these muscles on your front and overstretching all the muscles on your back. And that's going to put undue stress on the joints and create arthritis and degenerative joint issues. Um, you know, it's actually an overuse problem. So if you're going to be sitting all day, at least get on a ball and get up and stretch or walk, you know, five minutes, 30 seconds, whatever you can out of every half an hour, set a timer if you have to. Yeah. I love it. Some of the workforces now have folks with their computer where they have a desk that raises up and down yeah. so they can stand, they can sit, and then they can go and stick it on a treadmill and I, I don't know, that could it. be kind of tricky. I think it'd be yes. really good for brain development, though. You know, they're on a treadmill, walking, <laughs> walking slowly and, and typing all day long. Yeah. yeah, walking and typing. That's the new one. Yeah. Well, um, so, you know, this is really, we're just, again, just scratching the surface in, in a 20 or 30 minute interview here. But um, from from what I've heard and, and, and what we've talked about, you know, it's really important that uh, movement, exercise be a big part of um, everybody's health regimen. Consuming lots of liquids to make sure we have a healthy lymph system, uh, and we didn't even start talking about how water is so important for the electrical system. Um, but really paying attention to that, the live food diet, and making sure that we're getting our microcurrents from our food. That's another big takeaway from this interview. Uh, great, a great yeah, point. I'm, if you think about it, every single plant on the planet that can assist us to a higher level of health. We actually have receptor sites throughout our entire body for these plants. That's no mistake. We have, you know, the Darmain analog to echinacea or to cannabis. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more important that the plant is to human physiology, the more of those receptor sites we have. Mm -hmm. 
um, and in very specific locations. So those plants are designed, they're put here um, to be used by our body. I don't think to get better or to maintain, I think that, you know, we've been separated from that particular aspect of life and we've been cut off from the connectedness that we're supposed to have. Because if you look at the indigenous cultures, they were using microcurrent. They used things like their mind. Um, you know, they were known for telepathy. They would take mm -hmm. gems and they could heal bones by just touching them and putting a certain gem over here and saging a certain plant mm -hmm. or smudging a certain plant over here. And, you know, and all these now science is proving now that this was all electrical medicine, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, that's what it's, I love the fact that science can now prove what was all considered kind of like voodoo sort of medicine that the indigenous cultures used and now it's proving no, they were 100% right on and we've actually been severed from that connection. I mean, we talked about at the uh, conference, the microcurrent conference, how most of us don't even wear leather sole shoes anymore. So we're not even, all those nerve cells on the bottom of your feet, they're there for a reason. That's why foot reflexology works. Hmm. All those nerves end up on the bottom of your feet and then you walk around on the earth and you absorb all these three electrons from other earth. It's called earthing or grounding. Mm -hmm. And I mean, most people have no connection anymore there. And that's really bad news because then all this energy gets bottled up and it doesn't have any place to go and it creates all kinds of havoc. Well, it, it, and it sounds like uh, our audio is doing that same thing. We're creating some uh, yep. havoc there right now. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, call this a, an interview and give us uh, the, the vital statistics. Uh, you're uh, in Toledo, but I checked on the Google Maps. You're only a three and a half hour drive. So uh, give us your uh, website and phone number here so we, people can get in touch with you. Okay, so anyanakai.com. Anyanakai. Y-A. There it is. Yep. Anyanakai.com. And you know what? The phone number is on there, but in case you don't have a computer, 419-720-2972, extension 1. All right. 419-720-2972, uh, <laughs> extension 1. There you go. So, okay, Shark, great talking to you. We'll see you again next time. Thanks, Ben. All right, take care.